Braley Nardi in that dummy half roll for the Titans. Your Sunday ticket cleared for takeoff. We're underway. West Tigers putting boot to ball. It's the home team letting the kickoff bounce. And now Paliti, one of the attacking stars of this competition, given no chance of attacking early. Lifted and taken backwards towards her own goal line. Nardi pacing, passing for her. Captain Georgia Hale, part of every season Georgia. First carry for Jess Elliston. Brown is dropping Shaley Bent underneath. Shaley straight into the attack. As Gold Coast navigate this first set really comfortably. Curry by Shannon Martor, now the kick. Brown, the former W League player, boot to ball high above Seabus Super Stadium. Betty Welsh must have lost it in the sun. Then she's been tackled in the, well, no, it's offside. The ball had bounced, which means you are allowed to tackle the player, as we saw at NRL level controversially recently. Yeah, uncharacteristic of Botil Betty Welsh to let that one bounce. Maybe a little bit of sun out there today, but hopefully she doesn't lose much confidence from that. That chase from the Titans, they're definitely sending a little bit of a message nice and early to the Tigers, and in particular to their fullback. So Rochelle Tamarua spotting the Titans offside. There was no problem with the tackle at all. It didn't break any rules. Momentarily, I thought she'd rule dangerous tackle. But offside, the Titans in the chase. The Tigers cut a break after allowing that ball to bounce. In fact, just losing it. And now the Tigers with their first set. Three tackles in. Is Imogen Gobrin, her first starting role in her rookie NRLW campaign. In fact, the Tigers 17 contains 11 rookies. 11. As we look at... Brooke Talataina on debut, the halfback. The New South Wales under 19's representative this season. Here's Pilia Air Rasembali going high. End over end, a bit like Gold Coast first kick. This one taken well. Destiny Minor Sinapati. She being one of six first year players at the Titans. Jamie Chapman. Wow, there's such a difference in the in the ruck speed for both these teams. The Titans seem to be working for a quick play the ball already and and successfully doing so. On the other end of the scale, there's the Tigers who are very slow in getting the ball up the other end of the field. I think if the Tigers are going to stay in this game, they need to work as fast and as hard as the Titans in this quick play the ball. The thoughts of World Cup winning fullback Sam Bremner as the ball is lost by Shannon Martor. Looking to push the offload, fallen on by Sal Manor in that starting dummy half roll for the Tigers. We get to see Ebony Pryor off the bench. A late change for Brett Camorley. Christian Pio. 16 offloads as part of her game this season, easily most in the league. But her first few carries have been just head down, work hard. Now, Betty Welsh. So great to see Bo rebound from that serious knee injury during this campaign. Pilia Rasembali flicks it out, ball to ground, picked up by now. Betty Welsh finds herself at dummy half. This is the last tackle of the Tigers. Worked that out now. They push the offload. Picked up, not convincingly, but it's not ruled knock on. Pilia Rasembali will be forced to hand it over. Rasambali, I think, yeah, yeah. thought she might have knocked it on there and gave herself up there. But last tackle, definitely not the right option there. Looked a very unorganised for Tigers. They've got time to make up for it, but if they don't do that quickly, I think the Titans might, might make the most of the unorganised chaos going on for the Tigers. We've all seen a party a long way from her wing to get involved here. Nearly five minutes gone in this round seven contest. Strong carry by Niall Williams Guthrie, but the ball is lost. And again, the Tigers breathe a sigh of relief. Oh gosh, that is another lucky error for the Tigers. Unfortunately for the Titans, they're doing all the hard work, just can't keep 
keen to keep the ball in their hands. Yet to fully find their rhythm, the home team. Whitfield. 60 tackle busts for Jakai Whitfield, 10 clear of any other player in the league. Here's Gobrin. No doubt enjoying her first starting role. The former touch football player. Nevada George, Pilia El Rasembali, now Benny Welsh out to a wing. Tess Staines, Staines, Staines down the sideline, pulled down by Minor Sinapati. Staines back onto a wing after playing fullback last week. Here's Kurt. A starting edge forward role for Sophie. Salmanor goes through Nevada George. Lost by Whitfield, who had support on the outside in Rebecca Pollard. But now a mistake by the Tigers, lets Gold Coast off. Yeah, we've seen some errors really early here in the first half. Still feel like the Tigers look a little bit unorganised. They're missing the go-to forwards, just more so to get the shape off the back of them. Just a, maybe a couple more minutes to find their feet. Bit of a new team today for the Tigers. Referee Tamarua balancing the penalty count at one each and inviting Gold Coast up the field. And their only losses, the Titans, against the top two teams. Newcastle, 22-10. The Sydney Roosters, 30-8. They bounced back to the winner's circle last week against the Dragons. Yeah, it makes you wonder, taking on those tough teams, the ones that have been doing really well this season earlier on. Here's Politi, Sam trying to fend it through as they slide towards the eastern side of the ground. Back to Lauren Brown. Braley Nati finds Martor through the middle. Held by Christian Pio. They work themselves into their best position of the game. Gold Coast. Shaley Bent, ball away for Chapman. She gets it onto the ground for Minor Sinner Party. Back for Lauren Brown, and there's Georgia Hale, the captain, saying, go straight, go forward, and Shannon Markdor, happy to oblige. In fact, it was Jess Elliston with that carry. Hale. Long, they find some room. Karina Brown couldn't get to the corner. The covering tackle, Ja'Kia Whitfield stops a Titans try there. That's such a great defensive effort by Ja'Kia. Karina Brown was so no, close to getting that time. ball over the line. Great shape. And like you said, Maddie, Georgia Howe oh, ordering her troops to straighten up in the middle of the field, allowed for a little bit of space out wide there. But it's fantastic Wait. defensive effort Wait. from the left-hand side of the field for the Tigers. They scrambled as they had to. So the Tigers out of their own red zone. Strong defence coming in on Pollard. Kaya Whitfield, she's been one to watch this season. A new player that we haven't seen much of her before. I've loved watching her ability and how great she is, not only in her defensive efforts like we've just seen, but all those tackle busts that we mentioned earlier. Definitely a player to watch in the upcoming seasons. This is Staines before that, a really important carry. Leanne Tafanga dragging the defence with her, providing a bit of momentum when they desperately needed it. It's this left-hand edge that has been so effective for the Tigers in terms of delivering tries, but right there getting them out of trouble. Now, Goblin. Bilia Air Rasembali gets the kick away. Out towards a wing where Minor Sinapati makes the catch and hunts the middle of the field. Wrapped up by Noor. Just the one more game to come this round. You'll see it later this afternoon. The Roosters against the Eels. To wrap up round seven of NRLW, two more before we decide the top four and head into finals. Interesting play there from the Titans. They had to go back and play the ball again. And instead of scooting, which obviously you wouldn't want, it's not a quick play the ball from Karina Brown. I suggest they would go straight to their forwards and it went straight to Ivani Politi. 
There's not much she can't do. She's doing a little bit of everything already today. She plays like a fullback. She plays like a forward. She can do it all. Here's Kiria Ratu getting oh. the ball away. Georgia Hale. Hale down the middle. Here's <laughs> Betty Welsh. Georgia Hale pirouetting her way <laughs> over the goal line. You took the words right out of my mouth, Maddie. I was just about to say she do -si do her way up the field, <laughs> did a little pirouette and put the ball over the line. She was determined. She was looking for support and she got there for the Titans. Here we can see it here. Straight to the girl, Ivani Polita to take on the short side. And a nice little offload to their workhorse, Georgia Hale. Dosey do, spirit and pirouette <laughs> and down underneath the posts. She preempted Bo Vetti Welsh and the fullback's covering tackle. Look at her keeping the ball away from the fullback, reversing her way, spinning and pulling clear of the defence. Put the lights on. Beep, <laughs> beep. <laughs> no, unreal by Georgia Howe. That was amazing. She's got some determination on her, and this is off the back of defence. She's one of the most, the strongest probably, I would say, in my opinion, NRLW defensive player in this league. You keep your eyes on her and watch how many tackles she makes this game. She's absolutely relentless. Lauren Brown kicked the winning field goal last week with just one from five. In regards to goals and conversion, she's accurate from right in front to start. And Karen Murphy, expressionless to start, but she would have enjoyed this effort, Sammy from her captain, Georgia Hale, scoring her first try of the season. And you said it right there, Maddie. it is effort, and that is what Georgia Hale is really good at. They knew they were going the short side before Ivani Politi turned it back into the middle of the field, but for a middle to be pushing up when the ball is not even near her is absolute effort, and that's what you ask from all your troops. A try reward for all the tackling she does, leading the NRLW tackle count again in 2023. A former Young New Zealander of the Year 2020, that honour went her way. A Richmond junior in New Zealand and Georgia Hale, three years a warrior, now in her third as a Titan. She's been part of every NRLW season so far. Signed to the Titans if the Titans choose until the end of 2025. They know how good she is. A long-term leader on the glitter strip. This kickoff return, Shannon Martor with a real gallop up. And the two opposing front rowers, Godbrun and Pio, happy to accommodate. Now Jess Elliston, little juggle, but she gets it back in time. Brown for Shaley Bentz. A little bit of footwork, but you can't beat Curtin or Godbrun who wraps up the ball. Bradley Nati. Is set after points, building nicely. Should be able to launch a, an attacking kick at the end of it all. Elliston again. Great run. How good has she been to start this game? Fraley Nati. The Brown on the front foot. A chip, a chase. It bounces on the goal line. Betty Welsh does magnificently. Gosh, she done well there under pressure. A nice little kick from Lauren Brown, but an awesome chase as well. Both two better Welsh does what? All fullbacks must do, and she did it with ease. So the Tigers off the back of four straight losses. Concede the first try and find themselves working hard here midway through the set to get beyond their 20 metre line. This is Pollard. The third NRLW outing, number 19 in the centres. Taina keeps the ball going left. Now it's Whitfield. She can't break the tackle of Hale, who grabbed the plat accidentally, let go accordingly. But it has been spotted already by Rochelle Tamarua. Yeah, we've seen Georgia Hale knew straight away what she accidentally did. It's so hard when the girls have got long hair, though. It's a risk when you wear it out like Jakai does in a long ponytail, but of course it's counted as a head high. Realising that she had more than Jersey. She signalled that to the referee. And the penalty comes as a result. Here's Whitfield again. Pio 
getting off the pass of Salmanor. Just lifted awkwardly in the tackle. The landing okay. Line pressure, G, get forward. Here's a chance for the Tigers. Nevada George, it goes through Pilia El Rasembali, who was able to get free of the ball quickly. Salata couldn't advance play. Here's an opportunity for Tafanga. So it's Pollard on the left centre position and Tafunga shifting to the right today. Now George. With an offload. Jessica Kennedy. Now Pio. A long ball and they go in. Rebecca Pollard. I tell you what, the Tigers look really good once they straighten up. They seem to be going coast to coast. They go from the left-hand side of the field back to the right to try and shift it straight back out to the left. When one of their middles take it forward, they look so much stronger. And we'll see it here. They're on the right-hand side of the field. Nevada George, who we spoke about in the pre-game, one of their strongest players. Nice little offload. Quick hands, they see the space. And what about this ball from Pio? Your front rower throwing it to her winger. That's what we love to see. The skill set. A halfback pass from your prop. How good. Great skill, wasn't it? What a try assist to fire a ball like that and find the new left centre, Christian Pio. And this is what I love about the Tigers particularly in the first few rounds of the NRLW season was I thought they were so great at playing flat, fast footy and they love to keep the ball alive, alive with the offloads. And it took them a little bit to get into gear today with it, some new players in. I think they've got a bit of a feel of what's good for them and what's going to work. And the offloads and the flat, fast footy, looking up, seeing what's in front of them and playing on from there is definitely what works for these girls. Pauline Piliate Rasambali, the goal kicker. One from two last week. She's just above 50% for the season. There are the stats, her career being just this year, given she's one of the 11 rookies in this lineup. Strikes it nicely, but it doesn't hold its line, just missing the mark. Watch this pass again from Christian Pio that opens the way for that lady, Rebecca Pollard to score her first NRLW try in game number three at this level, Sam. And when you see the amount of space sometimes, it's so much easier to run to that space, especially when you're a prop. You see space, you run to it. She did so well to use her smart. She did a little double pump straight to her winger. That's really smart footy from Pio. So with no Rakia Horn HIA keeping her out, we see Leanne Tafunga go to the right centre. Rebecca come in in that left centre position, normally occupied by Leanne. And Rebecca scores the try. One of the changes thrust upon Rick Kamali at the selection table. And here's Jess Kennedy who played a role in that try. Another play of the ball. She gets it wrong, and they invite trouble here. There's good ball. There's great ball coming for the Titans here. Oh, gosh, doesn't she look upset also? Lift your head, Dahl. Turn around. Big defensive set. These defensive sets can be really good for your team. You get through them, you bring yourselves together, and you set a standard for the rest of the game. Well, Jess Kennedy has captained West Tigers' Tasha Gale Cup team. She's a young leader in this pop NRLW lineup, right, And she'll look Get to it. lead by defending really well here. Karen right. Murphy sending the instructions out for her team as Brown dummies and takes the tackle. Okay, it's a good one Rocky. from Pilia Erasembali. Braley Nahi finds Elliston. Couldn't step away past Eliza Silata. Stopped here because of a, a trainer on the field. Stay up, stay up. Nice little break stay for up. the Tigers. Jamie Chapman being called from the ground for a head injury assessment. I must have missed that, Matt. What? And as a result, it's Riley Jorgensen. Not a bad replacement. Fray. We all love to see Jorgensen. Go to. Go to. 
missed the last couple of games and makes her return earlier than planned today. Good hands by Williams Guthrie to promote Karina Brown. She's wrapped up by Pollard. Kira Rafton, her pass for Martor. They're close the Titans. Braley Nati out of dummy half, and the defence was awake to that. Christian Pio doing really well. Setting up a try, maybe stopping one. Now Brown, the grubber, well waded into the in goal. Coming through, but just a little late, the kicker. Brown almost got there. And only the ball's momentum saved the Tigers' blushes. That was close. A nice composed kick again. Great option. A little bit too much pepper. Either too much pepper on that ball or Lauren Brown just needs to speed up a little bit. Leanne <laughs> <laughs> Papunga needs to get that left boot working a bit better. She tried to kick the ball dead and had an air swing. Pollard. Been impressive. Rebecca Pollard, kind of involvement early in this game, a try scorer, good defensive work as well. Now Whitfield. And a knock on here, ruled against Whitfield. So they're crueling themselves, the Tigers. A couple of ruck errors in quick succession. And Brett Kamali. Thank you. Three errors each so far for both these teams. That's got to hurt, especially with the simple things like that. And we've seen it a little bit, especially this weekend, just the want to play the ball nice and quickly for your teammates to play off the back. If you do it correctly, it is so good for your team, but obviously, first things first, quick play the ball, do it effectively. There are the completion stats. Both teams looking to lift that above 70 and closer to 80 as this game continues to unfold. On for Jess Elliston. 15 minutes to play in the first half. One try each as Kiliaratu goes through the hands to Canfield and heavy defence on Zara sees the ball jolted free. Yeah, great defence by Nevada George there. I love her aggression in the tackle. She gets up in their faces is what I love and links up. Pio involved also. And P.O. Whitfield. has been outstanding today. Whitfield, hasn't she been involved? Yeah, that, that left edge of Rebecca Pollard, Ja'Kiah Whitfield. It was Whitfield under the ribcage that saw that arm free and the resulting support defenders knocked the ball out. Here's Whitfield going for another run, held by Lauren Brown. The Titans are aware to Whitfield's danger. They were there in numbers quickly. Sialata. Eliza, she's been part of every game so far this season for the Tigers. That's another good carry. And you have leg drive after contact. Sophie Curtin. Now, Talataina did well to handle that pass. It was out in front of her. She knocked it up to get a better grab. I just need a few completed sets here, the Tigers, to get back into their groove. And Nevada George may be realising that. Nothing fancy with that carry. Ebony Pryor out there now. She started off the bench and finds her 5'8". Bilia Erasembali high up towards the wing. Fullback. Mani Politi is there. Now she accelerates across fields. And Whitfield. Another good one on one tackle. She's been everywhere, Whitfield. We talk her up so much in her attack. That's two tackles in a row she's made so far. Really helping the middle of the field out. And she's gone for three, and there she goes. Just a couple of games as a Newcastle Knight last season. She moves to the Tigers. Play with rugby sevens in the background, also an ACL, so she's fought back from significant injury. Kiriohatu rolls it off the fingertips for Braley Nati to pick up, to clean up really. Now Jorgensen. 
after the NRLW, it's Titans Bulldogs. Both of those teams playing their final NRL game of the season as the kick is beautifully taken. Bo Betty Welsh, I thought she got it wrong. Ended up taking the catch high up on the neck, upper body, but does well. It was an awkward catch, and I was a little concerned with how much time Lauren Brown had to kick the ball there. You don't want her to be able to change the positioning of her hands when she kicks that ball. Makes it much harder for Botil Betty Welsh to catch it, but she did a great job in catching that and returning it for her team. Here's Ebony Pryor. More work from Pollard, and she takes high contact here. So this will help the Tigers. I can feel the momentum changing. I feel the Tigers are really getting into this game now. We've seen in previous games, they're happy to get into an arm wrestle of football. As are the Titans, I feel like the Titans aren't there yet. And the Tigers seem to want to work hard, get in that arm wrestle, play some footy, play that boring football, get up the ground, kick it, go again. Jess Elliston penalised, nothing much in it. Technically, it's a high contact tackle. And West Tigers now in good position. Jessica Kennedy Inside has it. Pryor at dummy forward. half. Nevada George ball playing through Pilia Air Rasembali. Fetty Welsh long in front of Staines over the top of Staines and over the sideline. Oh, Brett Kamali. He loves this coaching caper, but it can be frustrating at times like that. <laughs> Absolutely. This one's frustrating for any coach to watch. I think what we need to do, the Tigers. Get a little bit deeper off the ball for Botil Betty Well. She catches the ball and she's flat. She's almost had a stand standstill. Very hard for her to get a little bit of space on the outside of her edge players if she's catching it on a standstill. Just need to get the timing a bit better, these Tigers. Here's Jorgensen. I want to single out a couple of the starting front rowers for Gold Coast. Shannon Martor, Jess Elliston. Huge numbers in this first half. And as a result, we see fresh legs out there. Steph Hancock. She'll keep going all day through the middle. Another carry for Jorgensen. Inside the last 10 of this opening half. Georgia Hale scoring the first try of the afternoon. Fantastic run from range. Riley Nati to Lauren Brown, who kicks under pressure. It's a wobbly bomb bouncing away from Betty Welsh, who's in her own end goal. Work to do. She can't get back into the field of play. The chase is good. And they've been ruled offside, so actually the chase is bad. The problem was the start of the chase in front of the kicker. Yeah, and Brittany Braley Nutty was the person to deliver the ball to Lauren Brown. So it does make sense that she would be in the offside position, throwing the ball from dummy half. Unfortunate for the Titans because that was a great kick after a bit of kick pressure, but a really good kick chase. Yeah, and here we see here, Brittany Bradley Nati definitely offside. Great call from the referee. We have seen plenty of points this round as we look at the run of penalties now. Three straight to the team in possession. And the carry here from Bianca Bennett's on NRLW debut. Well done, Bianca. Talataina, the other debutant, gets the ball away. Well picked up by Pio, then stripped by Canfield. Two in the tackle. It's a penalty. We spoke about earlier those players that will step up when you don't have the likes of Salatoga Tuki and Kezi Apps, two leaders in this game that are in the middle of the field, usually taking it forward. Christian Pio today is one of those teammates for me. She has been doing everything, defending, attacking, pushing with support. Let's see what else she can do. Whitfields taking them inside the 10. They'll attack from close range. And here's Kennedy. Pryor. Talataina. Attacking the line and getting a penalty. High contact again against the Titans. This time it's Brittany Braley Nati. Right. Shante. 
Christian Pio. Into Canfields. Assisted in defence by Brightley Nati. Curtin. In fact, it's Kennedy. Pryor. Now the change of direction, and it's Bennett's going very close. Taking a good tackle from Martor. Wouldn't that have been a try on Daboo? Out of dummy half, the ball touches the Titans, or did it? They've ruled it just a wobbly pass. Maybe the arms were contacted. And the Titans come away with it. It's their starting front rower, Shannon Martor, going to work. Now Canfield for Karina Brown. Well, what happened in that ruck? Was the pass seemed to contact a Titan. Got pulled that way, and here they come again through Martor. Approaching 100 run metres in the first half. Here's Jorgensen, ball away for Bent. She's wrapped up by Staines and Sialata. That's tackle five. Lauren Brown under no pressure. Takes a time and roosts it high above Seabus Super Stadium. Hancock was there, but puts it down. She knew the kick was coming, just something the Titans might need to adjust is Lauren Brown right, gets nice up. and deep for these yeah, kicks, but every time here. three or four of her players are actually in front of her because she is so deep. I would have been interested then if Steph Hancock was to catch that if she was to be on side. Absolutely. That was my first thought. How did Steph Hancock get there <laughs> so quickly? We're not saying that because you're a front rower, no, Steph. It just happened very quickly. There was no one around Steph Hancock. If she was on side and took that ball, it was going to be some charge to the line from there. George plays it. Pryor finds Talataina. She keeps it going the same way. Oh, big contact. It's a really good tackle. It comes on Bianca Bennett's and Rochelle Tamaru, the referee, agrees. Great stop. Now Sialata. Here's this defence again. They're the two lowest scoring teams in the league, Tigers, Titans, but the Titans defence has allowed them to do that and yeah, still win it. games as Pilia Air Rasembali kicks, chases, loses the ball, and Paliti comes away with it. You can challenge her if you want. Challenge. Two players. And that's after the referee so polite. Isn't she? So she's offering for the tight. <laughs> yeah. You can challenge it, but I think there's two in the tackle. And the okay, fact there wait. is no challenge suggests that the Titans agree that we got that one wrong. So well officiated, Rochelle Tamarua. Very confusing when the referee offers you to challenge it. It's like Eddie McGuire on <laughs> a millionaire when you say the wrong answer. He offers you to change it. Imagine if you could phone a friend <laughs> from the footy field. Should we challenge this? <laughs> Here's Pilia and Rasembale. So they can take a lead here, West Tigers. Enjoying her debut, Bianca Bennett's. Product of Campbelltown, all well, that district, the Eagle Vale, St Andrews Eagles, as Nevada George tried to weave her way through the defensive line and failed just a couple of metres out. Talataina. Dummying and running, she takes the line on and she finishes just short. Stops by Kiria Ratu. Here's Ebony Pryor, ball away and desperate goal line defence does the job. That's tremendous, outstanding from the Titans. Yeah, a great defensive effort from the Titans there. The Tigers were a little bit confused. They had three of their players go to dummy half. Ebony Pryor though, she's slippery. So close to getting over that line. Titans did really well there. And now they're rewarded with a penalty to get out of their own half. Jess Kennedy looked destined to score. There were a couple of efforts. One to take it to ground, another to stop the lunge for the line. And now Destiny Minor Sinner party. Karina Brown goes from dummy half. 
is a trademark run from Karina. Another of the every season of NRLW players across the league. She was there when it started in 2018 with four teams. Now we've grown to 10. The four-team final series looming large. Oh, Shannon Marto, those runs is exactly what any team needs. Go forward with intent. 10 carries, more than 100 run metres in the first half, Sammy. Shannon Marto, what an effort. Aratnia Politi. Here's Kiria Ratu. Back to Marto. Now Georgia Hale. Getting away or fending away from Nevada George, who didn't really commit to the tackle, leaving it to Sialata. Have come more than 70 metres. A grubber, well weighted, well angled. Nothing Pollard could do. That's beautiful rugby league. That's the Titans at their best in 2023. And it comes from that lead up before that beautiful kick. It was Georgia Howe keeping the ball alive with Shannon Mato doing their job every single time. This was a perfect, well-weighted kick. And the only option the Tigers had to do was to get the ball and take it out. There was way too many Titans players there ready to put the ball down for the four points. Time for nearly a full set here for the Titans. It's a long goal line dropout and Shannon Martor, the player of the first half perhaps, just adding to those run meters. What a carry, back inside the 20 meter zone. Gold Coast have more tackles in this zone than any team in the league. Here's Avania Politi. Wrapped up by Pryor in the end, a penalty. It's 10 meters offside. So you can't take the quick tap inside the 10. Brittany Braley Nardi reminded of that. Do they go for two? No, it's tap and go. Let's get the full six. Steph Hancock will go close. She got to ground, but just short of the line. Braley Nardi. Now Georgia Hale. Here's Lauren Brown. Jorgensen wrapped up by Tafunga. The crash play for Shannon Martor, who puts it down. Double knock on. Right this idea. The execution Inside. lets them down. And Karen Murphy prepares to head for the dressing rooms. Her team up by only two, despite the huge run meters from Shannon Martor. 136 of them in the first half. It is one try apiece. It's the Titans, the favorites, ahead, but only just. Gold Coast six. Lead West Tigers four, a break, then we're back with the halftime show. This week's game as well, that 11 day stand down. And next up for Gold Coast Parramatta, back here at Rabina. So from the kickoff, we see the Tigers return through Jess Kennedy. What? Betty Welsh is shoveling it on one more player for Bianca Bennett. Pilia e Rasembale to Sialanta. So they find a bit of width early in the tackle counts. And Pry goes back towards the middle now. Pry for Bennett to have another carry. Wrapped up by Jorgensen. And Georgia Hale, and now the kick from Pilia e Rasembali. Torpedo, a wobbly one down the ground, but getting there on the full. Politi. She caught that really well then, like you said, Maddie. That was a wobbly one. She caught that with ease. And now Minor Sinapati. Real live wire and lives up to that description with that carry. Finding halfway on tackle two. Now Shannon Martor, the player of the first half. Steph Hancock with an offload. Braley Nardi finds her captain on the move. Georgia Hale. Wrapped up by Bennett and Pryor. To get to the last play now, Lauren Brown, the grubber. 
Up towards a wing of Stage who picks it up nicely down around her boot laces. Not a bad place to end the set. It'll be up to the Titans down to really jam their defense and keep the Tigers down here. Kicking to a corner is always a really good option, but it's always better backed up by a really good defensive set. The Tigers have to win this one to keep their faint finals hopes alive. They just have to win. A win for the Gold Coast will keep them inside the top four and on target for finals footy again. For the second time in their three-year history as Pio loses her legs, courtesy Riley Jorgensen. Betty Welsh catch and pass for Kennedy. So both teams happy to get in the grind early in the second half. The kick from Piliae Rasembali, not as she would have liked, but it still finds the sideline. Just not the territory she was hoping to chew off. Yeah, and territory is something they most definitely needed there, the Tigers. They only got just over the 30 metre mark in that attacking set. Great defensive set by the Titans, and now they're going to be in their good ball straight away. Here's Martor again. At this rate, she will soar past 200 run metres for the game, but the play the ball was a little premature. Brittany Braley Nardi couldn't get there in time. She was confused. I think they're still confused. Play on. Karen Murphy knows exactly what happened, and it's not as they planned. So here's Pio again. The Tigers lead the penalty count 7-3, so Gold Coast will be looking to tidy up that element of the game. And maybe introduce some offloads as well. Yeah, I think that's how the Tigers have managed to stay in this game. The Titans' skill set seems to be a little bit better than the Tigers, but they're keeping the ball alive, the Tigers. They look much more dangerous when they do so. Here's Bennett's working through the middle. Prior for Nevada George. Now Talataina couldn't take the ball. It arrived awkwardly up behind her head. She fished for it and caught nothing. Good run. Williams Guthrie. Big day for Brooke. Who made an NRLW game. Here's the experience of Karina Brown. Another good carry. The Gold Coast actually lead the offload count 8-5. That's against a team that leads the lead for offloads as we see Shaley Bent caught high. No quick tap on foul play as they're made to bide their time. Yeah, interesting just to see if the Titans can just get a good set away here. Put scoring points in the back of their mind. They don't need to score any points just yet. Just get into this game. Work for a repeat set. Apply some pressure to the Tigers. Williams Guthrie almost able to pull clear of Talataina. Lofipo out there in jumper 14. Likewise, Danny Parisi, jumper 21. So Karen Murphy making some changes early in this second half. Braley Nahi going for Martor. On the leg drive. Shannon Martor, that's 170 run metres plus now. Braley Nati out of dummy half, diving for the line. She's wrapped up by Pryor. Hale wanted it, gets it, quick hands, it goes to Ben. Ben gets the ball away. Kilia Rato Minos in a party. Great covering defence. The Tigers get there in numbers and stop the try. That is excellent defense from the Tigers, and that is exactly what you want. In particular, when you come out in the second half and you want to set a standard for the rest of the game, this is what needs to be done. Urgency in defense, numbers in defense, knowing that you can count on your teammates to back you up in your defensive efforts. They've set the standard for the rest of their teammates and for the second half. So Pollard comes away with it while the 5'8 is still undergoing some sort of assessment, so they're attacking without a 5'8 at the moment. It failed. And now she trots back into position. Here's Dalatayina. The 19-year-old. These girls are so tough, Pat. You don't rarely see them 
come off with all these bumps and bruises. They'll keep going until they're ordered off by their trainers. That's how much it means to them. Jess Kennedy and Bennett's giving Kamali great service off the bench. And here's Bennett, ball away, quick hands, Pilia Rasimbali. Now Silata, wrapped up by Kilia Ratu. It's a double barrel barrage again today in this game when it comes to the surnames as Pilia Rasimbali gets the ball away. Tafanga is forced to clean up. Betty Welsh gets her pass to Nevada George. The kick off the side of the boot, still there for Whitfield. And now they'll have to turn it over. How do we feel about Nevada George's kicking license? Uh, he's just gone through the shredder. <laughs> uh, God, not that I can talk at all. <laughs> just a lack of communication, a bit of a breakdown there from the Tigers, putting pressure on themselves to have to defend another set. Williams Guthrie with the play of the ball. Now Riley Jorgensen. Good tackle from Kennedy. Hale, Hale holds the ball and runs into Bennett's. I like the shape here the Titans have. They open up the left-hand side for Brown. Politi, her pass into Staines. Have the Tigers knocked this on? Yeah, it looks like a knock-on here from the Tigers. In the middle? All right, pop on. So, did Rochelle Tamarua say knock on Titans, they're meaning Tigers? I'm not sure. Clock's on, 20 seconds. The ball arrived low, Staines went all or nothing and appeared to, I'll let you know when to, feed the to lose the ball. I think, yeah, I think it may have Quickly, been a... 10 seconds. Yeah, it's a, it's seconds. a Gold Coast scrum feed. Right, right option there. Break. Lauren Brown, flamboyance. Now Kiria Ratu, the straight runner. Well, Inati, and here's a charge. A charge for the Titans, and the Tigers have had the number up here. Tony, coming into tackle two. I have no try. Can you check to see if Titans are held up? Thank you. Let's see what we think here. Just looking to see if the ball gets to the ground or if the ball's held up. Looks held up to me. It's been sent up, no try. It's a conclusive proof this ball touched the ground to give Danny Parisi her first NRLW try. Ooh. I'm going to say, Sam Bremner, I think the ball has touched the ground. All right. But I, but I don't think... At this point here, the ball touches the ground. There you go. In the end goal. We have a decision. Well, what are you doing in commentary? Get the yourself bunker. in the bunker. <laughs> I've, I've tried to send Steve Blocker Roach there a few times. He point <laughs> blank refuses to go. It's a, it's a first try for Danny Parisi. She backed herself and she's won. Off the bench and over the goal line. Look at it again. Powerful run, very powerful run. And for me, that happens by going out the back early as the Titans did. It didn't work out for them when the ball went to ground. They managed to get the ball back off the scrum. And when you do that a few times, you run out the back, you make that defense real cautious. That's what you're going to continue to do. Now to hit it back straight up the middle, just keeps them really honest in the middle of the field. It's paid off for the Titans. Lauren Brown waved away. She'll be disappointed with that. So it stays a converted try. The difference, a big miss there by Lauren Brown. An unhappy day goal kicking last week and a bad miss, but Danny Parisi signed by the Titans until the end of 2025. They know her potential. She played in that Prime Minister's game late last year and has won a state premiership, the BMD state premiership with Burley before launching into her first NRLW campaign. So a big 12 months for Danny Parisi.
Love hearing these stories of players that come through the ranks and play for teams such as the Burley Bears. They seem to do really well in preparing them for this arena, for the professionalism of NRLW. And it's only going to continue to grow. Riley Jorgensen, another Titan out of that Premiership winning Burley team. To find good form in NRLW. Here comes Shannon Martor again. Just wind her up and watch her go. Yet to run out of steam. Now the try scorer Parisi. They want a powerful finish to this game. Still a long way to go for the Tigers, who are only a converted try adrift. Here's Shaley Bent, bit of footwork again, opening the way for Kilia Ratu. And now the ball comes free, and error lets West Tigers off the hook. And Nevada George has it for the visitors. Yeah, the errors continue to grow for both teams. Seven errors each at the moment. It's making it hard to be in the grind of football. And it's still such a tight game. Whoever holds on to this football has a real good chance of going all the way and winning this game. This run here from Bianca Bennett. That was a significant collision with Shannon Martel. Both players okay. And is Hope Tavanga. Their second NRLW game. The blue last week. Off the bench as well, but it was a mistake here from the visitors. They'll have to be really good, West Tigers, to win this game. They'll have to get those sort of errors out of their play. Yeah, and once you start to get into the cycle of errors and things not working out, and it's really hard to get out of that rabbit hole. So they need to prevent it from happening. The errors keep climbing. And get like I said, it makes it really tough. Right, they don't get another okay. half time to reset themselves. Right. So they need to start here. Here's Ivania Politi starting her run behind the scrum, heading to the left hand side and appealing okay, for a penalty there. Oh, oh. Ryan Tafanga makes the tackle along with Sailata. Ali oh, Nahi oh, for Parisi. Oh, Ebony Fryer goes down around the ankles. Here's Lofipo. One of the young arrivals to NRLW this year, Sienna Lofipo. Another player out of that Origin Under 19s game. She gets a penalty, quick tap and go. It's approved by Rochelle Tamarua and Bradley Nati. Puts the Titans in great position again. Martor. If any Titan deserves a try, it's Shannon, who is now above 100 or 200 run metres. Bradley Nardi has to surrender. surrender. Having fallen back in behind her own player. Hale goes for Bent. Shaley, stubborn, but eventually forced to ground. Brown out of dummy half, Lauren Brown. Driven backwards, strong, great work, Leanne Tafanga. Because I was looking for advantage. No advantage. Offside. Oh, offside the Tigers. They left the line early. Referee Tamarua allowing play to continue for advantage. None taken. So they reload. And here's another shot fired by Shannon Martor. Five players in there to keep Shannon Martor up. Back to the 10. Marcus push up. Marcus White. Is Rochelle Tamarua the politest referee in the game? He took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> We've been oh, saying it all wow. contest. <laughs> now here's Danny Parisi. Georgia Hale. Hale wants a double. She's into the in goal and driven oh. backwards late. Held up. Let's tackle two. Tom off. That's twice now they've been held up and had to take it back Marcus, to the 10. It just gives the Tigers a little bit of time to get a breath and reset. Tigers need to get off their line here. Lofipo makes the catch, goes to Politi. Great tackle. Jakaya Whitfield one on one with Politi. Jorgensen. She tries the power play and it's shut down by Silata. 
Now Bray Nardi. She shoots for the line. Finishes just short. Good tackle, Pio. Lofipo with her kick into Talata'ina. Still the last, not played at by the Tigers. Now the kick comes from Hale into the in goal. Tess Staines watches it go dead in goal. So the Tigers handle that defensive set really well. We've seen some great defensive sets from the Tigers. They've got, just got urgency to get off their line and work together to keep the Titans from going over. Maybe a little bit of unorganisation there from the Titans. They were looking for a kicker and there was no kicker to be seen. Carter George just getting some treatment. We've complimented Rochelle Tamarua as the women's game continues to grow. It would be remiss of us not to congratulate Belinda Sharp and Casey Badgett controlling NRL games, the first single referees to control NRL contests. We'll see Casey Badgett in the game following this one. Titans Bulldogs. Two very accomplished referees, Belinda and Casey. Well done. Now the charge from the Gold Coast Titans. And the Tigers through Kirk it was now Silata. Tafanda. Final play as Jess Elliston prepares to return. Pilia Air Hassan Bali across the ground. Karina Brown down on her haunches. Make sure of the gather, and Niall Williams Guthrie with the second carry. We saw Jess Elliston not in distress, but troubled at halftime. It looked like she was fighting some heat conditions as they applied ice packs to the back of the neck and lower back. So she's obviously okay to return to the game. Good to see. And a cut for Karina Brown that will need some attention. She's going back to her wing as Martor goes back to work through the middle. Bradley Nati in trouble. Lauren Brown gets the kick away. And it's knocked on, is it, by Betty Welsh? Did she touch the ball? She was facing her own goal line. I thought it went back towards the opposition in goal. But play allowed to continue. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier in the game when there's no kick pressure on Lauren Brown. She purposely changes her hands on the ball to make it a really tough kick to catch. And both team were very well. She's very confident under those high balls. Could see it spinning. A little out of control, made it a little bit harder. If I was both team very well, she'd be screaming at my team teammates to be putting a little bit of kick pressure on Lauren Brown. And now Ebony Pryor, so there's been a head clash. It's been a big three minutes. Plenty happening. Both teams lifting their completion rates to 70. Possession slightly in favour of the home team as Pilia Air Rasset Bali gets the kick away. It finds Politi on the full. And Pania comes back. Ponytail temporarily grabbed there by Staines, who let go immediately. That's why Politi's appealing for the penalty. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? When you when their heads don't get thrown back with the pull, it's not as much picked up by the referees. We saw a penalty in the first half of that very scenario. This time it's let go. So did the referee miss it or was the instant regret enough to avoid the penalty? Well, we did say she was a nice referee. Maybe she got so <laughs> Brown for Shannon Martor. Shannon's numbers, just unbelievable. She's approaching 250 run metres with 15 minutes left. Lofipo dummies and straightens into Talataina. The two under 19 year olds colliding, not for the first time. Last play, and Talataina has been injured in the tackle. Also down is Curtin. We've got fallen troops everywhere, and Talataina. Bleeding heavily from the nose. There's Karina Brown being patched up for the knock she received not so long ago. It can be a brutal game, Rugby League. It certainly can, but you'll find these girls will bounce back up and they'll be back again playing more football. It's just how much these girls want it.
It's a round game. There's a bit on the line for both teams. The Tigers want to keep the hope alive that they can make the top four. The Titans want to remain in the top four comfortably. It means a lot to both teams. They're putting their bodies on the line, getting strapped up. They'll get back out there and continue to roll. Brayton Astor, Cooper Cronk, Greg Alexander standing by to set the scene for the first NRL game today. The Titans and the Bulldogs. Can the home team finish on a high? Tino Farsul Malaawi. He's had some sort of season. Do they finish with a win against Canterbury? Who desperately need a win and some happier headlines. That's coming up next, followed, of course, by the Raiders on the road against Cronulla. A game that will shape the bottom half of that top eight and decide our week one finals picture. But still plenty of medicos out there dealing with the players here, these teams. As we've touched on, living up to their trend of being the lowest scoring outfits in the league. 10-4. The Tigers still alive, needing to win to keep their season going. And Gold Coast, they have to win this to set up games against Parramatta next week. Then the Raiders in Canberra. They win both of them. They'll be a top four team, definitely. There's the ladder. Gold Coast chasing their fifth win of the season today. We need to underline what a special effort it is from the Tigers with no Rakia Horn in the centres, no Sarah Togatuki up front, no Kezi Apps on an edge. Here's Lauren Brown, the grubber into the in goal, beautifully weighted again, and Tess Staines had to play at the ball. And Gold Coast will get it back. The grubbers from Lauren Brown today have been things of beauty. I can't remember one not being alive until the final few millimetres. Yeah, that's right. God, she's good to watch with her kicking game. Stay outside. She's got two repeat Stay sets outside. in the last six minutes for her team. Building pressure. This is what we wanted to see. Yeah, Lauren's general play kicking outstanding. The goal kicking is the area she's looking to, to really lift as we head towards finals. Here's Barisi, a try scorer already today. Hail for Elliston. Jess. She was road runner for a moment. The legs were going, but they were off the ground. Jorgensen. Riley trying to shrug three of Gobrin. Now Hale, Lauren Brown looking inside, then out. In the end, she goes it alone, straight into Cialata. Elliston, long. Here's Lofipo. And Canfield couldn't get the ball away. She tried too hard, lost it. And the Tigers clean up again. They're still in this. West Tigers on the road, off the back of four straight defeats. And Ja'Kaya Whitfield playing a big role in, in making it so. That's a great run. Leanne Tafanga. So the first two involvements in this set come from their best attacking players. Whitfield Tafanga. Backed up by Staines. Filled by Parisi. tackles do they burn she finding the opposition half there's four down as nevada george's tackles christian pia catch and pass for gobrin gobrin crosses halfway but on the fifth play so it'll be a kick here you'd imagine from pilia Rasambale, who has time to measure and drive the ball high down for minos in the party yeah, nice kick there to get themselves out of trouble. Hoping it, it can be backed up by a nice defensive set. Their back three got them out of a bit of trouble there, the Tigers. They've been doing really well both in attack and defence today. I'd love to see a little bit more shape from the Titans here with Ivani Politi out the back. But she's in first receiver here. I think they need to start creating a little bit of space for her. Great run. Williams, Guthrie, some big fins. Then the offload. For Karina Brown. That was some sort of carry from the right centre. 
at Gold Coast. Elliston again lifted in the tackle and, and flung the ground. Now Hancock loses the ball. She'd wound up. It came hard off the chest and she couldn't regather. She's certainly eager, Steph Hancock, to get her hands on the balls and really make the most of her time on the field. We know she loves her footy. Just a couple of errors in today's game, unfortunately. The Gold Coast seemed to get on in a bit of a rhythm and then make an error or change the ball over somehow. Here's the, cunt, the run from Williams Guthrie, then the put down from Hancock, but Cameron Murphy, Gold Coast's coach, such a, a legend of the women's game. Here's Pollard. I wonder whether she'll have the honour of hanging the Karen Murphy medal over one of her own players in coming seasons as player of the grand final. The Karen Murphy is Murphy's probably the most humble person in the NRLW. I'm sure she'd be honoured, but one of those people that'd be embarrassed to make a big deal out of herself. Absolutely. Doing some great work at NRL Central before going into the coaching ranks with the Gold Coast Titans, as we see now the run from Salma Noor. She started this game as dummy half. That role served by Nevada George on that occasion. Here's Pio. I'd love a repeat set, the Tigers. As Pilia E. Rasembali goes high across the ground. Paliki puts it down. And now Brown picks it up. It was knocked backwards by Gold Coast. Yes, yeah, some awesome pressure by Ja'Kai Whitfield here. Take the ball back. Take the ball back, Marcus, push up. Wait, Wait. Yeah, the Tigers, 40% of this second half only in opposition territory. Just one tackle in the opposition 20 in the second half. They're still definitely in it though, aren't they? Probably due to the Titans' errors. They haven't looked particularly dangerous with the ball. But point-wise... The defence has kept them in the game. What they need now is, is position, some time applying pressure to Gold Coast's goal line. Williams Guthrie, quick hands, beautiful hands. Karina Brown away down the sideline. Last play here for the Titans. Hale, it goes through Canfield. Lofipo, the grubber. Steph Hancock trailing. Riley Jorgensen there. The ball bounces over the dead ball line, but Sergeant, off who? Goal line, goal line dropout is the ruling. It's off the Tigers. They've built more pressure. Great play again. You could see Lauren Brown calling for the ball off the back of this awesome run from Karina Brown. If it wasn't for one of the speediest superstars in the game, in Ja'Kai Whitfield, to run her down and tackle her, she might have got through herself. A nice That's little repeat set to build some more pressure. Plenty more time on the clock to score some points. Replay showing that ruling is spot on off a couple of Tigers. And over the dead ball line. Here's Steph Hancock. Ball safely controlled this time. And they can't stop the slow play the ball without an illegality. Tap and go, Georgia Hale. Georgia Hale looking for two. Georgia just shorts. She was alive for a long, long way in that run. Lofipo. And Siena, who is forced to ground. Paliti, second guess to self. Pass for Jorgensen. Jorgensen, what a surge. They've done well to get underneath Riley and stop her. How long can this goal line defence from the Tigers prevail? They've spent so much of the second half camp right here. Lauren Brown knows it. She took Goblin on. But the Tigers front rower makes the stop. And now Elliston, another crash play. They've held him up again. Time off. Well, this is dour stuff from the Tigers. Jess White. On the 10, on the 10. Last tackle, time back on. Knowing they have no. to score next, the Tigers 
A desperation personified. The grubber cleaned up by Bo Betty Welsh. Play on the ruling. They're lucky to have gone back there, Boti Betty Welsh. There to pick up the ball. A little lucky set there. Titans were looking really good. Lauren Brown unable to put in one of her awesome kicks she's been producing this second half. So how long can the Tigers continue to burn three, four, five tackles finding halfway? When do they need to shake it up in their own half and try the quick shift or some more, maybe quick field is the option? Well, we spoke about it in the first half, Matty. They look dangerous when they keep this ball. And again, this is the third time in this game we've seen an accidental hair pull. Yeah, the second one on Jakaya Wetfield too. 14, a report for the hair pull. I don't think any of these hair pulls would ever be on purpose. It's just a win at all cost thing. You're trying to get someone to the ground. At the last minute, you go for their jersey if you can't get in contact with them. And a lot of the time, particularly when your hair's quite long, it will get in the way. You can see it flies around everywhere. Yeah. And I think a penalty is just what the Tigers need. We're only just speaking about it to get them in some good ball. Hope Tavanga, I'm glad to see her bounce straight back to her feet. That leg trapped awkwardly for a moment. Christian Pio on the back of the run from Tavanga. So here's a chance to find the opposition 20. Pilia Air Rasembali, Boveni Welsh, Tavanga given no room by Minor Sinapati. And Georgia Hale in there over the top to make sure of it. Hale up above 44 tackles again. We're well, yet to see Botil Betty Welsh get onto that ball with some speed and in some intent. She's very flat footed when she gets it, but she's dangerous when she's running onto that ball with speed. Nevada George, Taladaina gets the ball to Betty Welsh. She passed with Winfield under all sorts of pressure. Back on Titans. And it's been ruled knock on Gold Coast. So Tigers will get the ball back here. And Gold Coast, Some off. Captain's Challenge coming. Sorry, got a Captain's Challenge. Titans are challenging the on field decision of a knock on. Thank you. Well, why not with just over five minutes to play? Offload there from Vetty Welsh. Off the ball hands is initially of offloaded backwards from the Titans. And then it touches the hand of the Titans player into the Tigers, which constitutes a knock on. The challenge is unsuccessful. But at least they get a breather before they turn to an important Georgia. defensive set, the Titans. Challenges yeah, that's right. And that's, you see a lot of the teams Titans. do that in the back end of the second half. Use up their captain's challenge and looks like Shannon Mato is about to go back on the field. This could be exactly what the Titans need to get some more points on the scoreboard with five and a half minutes to go or just over. Her next carry will be a significant one into very rare company in the history of NRLW. Only three players previously have run for more than 250 run metres. And you think about what type of run metres they are. They're in the middle of the field with a defensive line right in front of you. There's some hard carries. That's all right. Don't push. Don't need to push. Wait, hold on. And two of the three are involved in this game. In Jakaya Whitfield and Vania Politi. The other being Tegan Berry. Shannon will be the first front rower to do it. And it looks like she does it with ease. Absolute energizer bunny. She'll be the first forward to do it. And they'll need her to do it because the Tigers are fighting hard. Coming to this game on a four game losing streak, they have to win to keep their finals hopes alive. Here's Nevada George passing at the line for Pio. Jorgensen makes the tackle. Salma Noor. Talataina, the Whitfield carry. To a strong tackle, ball comes free. Good defence, Gold Coast. Great defence there by Niall Williams. She gave Jakai Whitfield a taste of her own medicine there. We've seen Jakai in a real great defensive game. But she just received a taste of her own medicine. Great defence. There's the carry from Shannon Martor taking her above 250 metres. The first 
NRLW forward to do it in the six seasons of this competition. Well done, Shannon Martor. Queensland Maroon, Australian Jillaroo, Mulberry All-Star, and Gold Coast Titan, Shannon Martor. What a day. She doesn't look tired to me. She can run for 500 metres. <laughs> Elliston, the other starting front rower, not bad either. Now Brown. Everyone's gone. Stabs this ball over the top. It will bounce down into the in goal. Poor Tess Staines. She's confronted that scenario all day, courtesy Lauren Brown. Yeah, Lauren Brown's kicking game. You can see her eyes scanning the back of the field to where those defensive players are. She hit it in such a great spot, right in between the fullback and the winger. Bit of an unlucky one here for Tess Staines. Tackled without the ball. She didn't make a play at the ball. She certainly looked like she was going to leave it. Lauren Brown. 10 W League games. Maybe explaining some of the reason for her great kicking game, but it's a spot kick she's struggling with, the goal kicking. <laughs> the one at what us kickers that I have no idea about right, kicking up. would assume is the easiest. Here's Karina Brown. Energy from the first minute to the 70th, and Martor tackled by Curtin. Braley Nardi, the Titans, looking to put it to bed here. Fani Paliti will do exactly that. She chooses her moment perfectly. Avania Paliti storms onto the ball, through a hole, and in for the try that should wrap this one up. I love it. This is how they have been meaning and needed to use Avania Paliti throughout this game. Give her just half a centimetre and she will be unstoppable. A lovely little inside ball here. Straight to Avania. Sophie Curtin a little bit too slow on tying in for her defensive line. What a beautiful try assist from Sienna Lofipo. Looks outside, finds the fullback on the inside. And the teenage talent Sienna Lofipo to the experience of Ivania Paliti. And it's just the simple things that Lafipo has done in this play. Squared up on her player, looked to go outside for a nice soft pass on the inside. And there would have been plenty of communication in the lead up to that, to know that who else than Ivani Paliti will be steamrolling back on the inside. And a great time of the game with only two minutes to go. That is exactly what the Gold Coast Titans needed to finish off this game. Decent numbers for Politi as well. 200 run metres, seven tackle busts. And a try in there now as well. Lauren Brown. Flags are up this time. It's 16 points to four. The Titans can reach out and touch their fifth win of the season. And Karen Murphy, you can smile now. Vania Politi does seem to have that presence, like you mentioned, Maddie, earlier, that she decides to pop up at the right time. And she's such an athlete. It's as though she thinks, you know what? My teammates need some more points here. I might decide to run on this, on the inside here and score a try. She chooses wisely, and when she does, she's unstoppable. The NRL Titans finished their season today, but the NRLW Titans are back at Rabina next weekend against Parramatta. Then off to Canberra in the final round against the Raiders. Tracking for finals footy again this season, the Gold Coast Titans NRLW team under Karen Murphy in her second season in charge. They were sixth last season, one and four, just the one win. Been a nice rebound as Betty Welsh dummies hits a hole and takes the tackle from Shante Kiriaratu. Assisted by Shaley Bent. Now, Imogen Goblin. Is there a late highlight for the Tigers who spent precious little time applying pressure in this part of the field? Tafanga gets the ball away. Silata. Wrapped up by Kirill Artu and Bent. Big step. 
from Salma Noor. So again, Gold Coast defence today is worthy of mention equally to their 16 points scored. Palatayina. Six, Hanover. And Jorgensen around the boots with Hancock Go, up minutes. top. I'd be going straight to Shannon One Martor side, trying to <laughs> send her through a hole. 263 Go. run metres in her 21 carries. Karina Brown takes it away from the middles. So halftime sounds, it's win number five for the Gold Coast Titans. Three tries to one. The visitors were stubborn. The Karen Murphy team gets it done. They're home 16 points to four.